So hello, my name is Rob and this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've been painting my Deathwing. This is a really easy method to do. While not the quickest, it is easy and it does give a really good effect. And likewise, any bone armor in general. This is set up exactly like my Dark Angels painting tutorial. So I'll link that at the end of the video. Stay tuned for all the other bits. But this part is going to focus on the armor itself. As always, I'll leave all information in the description box below. And don't forget to chuck us a like and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing we need is a miniature. I'm going to be using this Assault Intercessor and the first step is to prime it using Wraith Bone Spray. If you don't have Wraith Bone, a grey will work, but the next step you may just need to do a couple of coats. But before we do absolutely anything, or while we wait for our primer to dry, we need a nice cup of tea. Nice. Now our primer is completely dry, I see I'm going to be working in sub-assemblies for the purpose of this video, where the arms, backpack, head, shoulder pads will be kept separate, and one of his arms, and the main body. Now the first thing we are going to do is we're going to overbrush this miniature. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a minute, but I want to talk about this brush for a minute. This is a foundation brush, it's a makeup brush. Um, it cost me about £2 is available from Primark in the UK. I've been buying loads of these and I've been using these brushes for a while now and I must say they are excellent. And what we're going to do first is we're going to overbrush some Ushabti bone. Now how I'm going to do this is firstly I'm going to just wet my fingers and I'm going to wipe it over the bristles just so it's ever so slightly damp. What we want to do is retain some of that moisture and then what we're going to do, we're just going to get a good amount on our brush, like I'm doing here. And when we go to wipe off the excess, instead of wiping it off completely, like we would, and obviously making the bristles dry for a dry brush, we're just going to keep it ever so slightly damp. So just wipe off that little bit less than what you think. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to work over the miniature, back and forth, making sure that I'm almost buffing that color on. Don't worry if it's a bit patchy. We're gonna go over this a few times. So I only actually ever do one coat, but that's why I use a lighter primer. If you are using a darker primer like gray, then I would advise two passes on this. So here you can see our guy, lovely Ushabti Bone. All I've done is obviously buff the color on. And the next step is to get Seraphim Sepia. And what we're going to do, just using a just a regular brush with a good well on it, I'm using this Raphael, I think this is a size two, and just give it a really good shake. Sometimes our washes end up a little bit shiny, that's because we're not shaking them. You need to give them a real good shake. I load up my brush, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this over. All I'm looking for here is that it's evenly distributed. Don't pile it on too much that it pulls we're not looking for that we're just looking to kind of let it settle in the recesses and give us a little bit of a depth to our miniature so here you can see that the whole thing is completely covered next I'm going back to my makeup brush with dry brushing Ushabti bone so you can start to see a pattern emerging here with whenever I do power armor as I do a base color, I wash it, then I reapply that base color. And what this is actually gonna do, if we're gonna just pass over it nice and lightly, we're gonna have to go through a few different angles, but effectively what we want is the shade to stay settled in recesses and all those little like uh, panels on the power, power armor and stuff like that. And what we're looking for is just to make sure that the flat surfaces are have got like a nice solid color and things like the the armor panels on the legs and you'll see what i mean just here um, you can kind of see just how if i apply it this way that we've also got just near that edge we've got a nice bit of shade settling and that's exactly what we want but the majority of the armor we do want to be ushabti bone so i'm just going to complete this now so here you can see there is our the majority of work done. If you wanted to stop now, you probably could and you've got quite a good look to it. But I'm going to do another pass, this time with Screaming Skull. What I'm looking to do here is focus it towards the edges. 
So same again, my brush is just ever so slightly damp. It's not completely 100% dry. And I'm just gonna work things like this little side panel, the edges of the um, armor panels on the legs, just to kind of lighten those edges up. And there we can see, see it's a little bit lighter now. Not by much, Screaming Skull and Ushabti Bone, there's not much in it, but I just like the way this looks. It gives a, a real good, almost like a bleached bone look. Now, lastly, Wraith Bone. All I do with this, same again, with a dry brush, I just focus it from the top down. As you can see, like I'm doing here, just from a top down perspective, just catching it. We will do some additional steps at the end and we, will, we can come back to Wraith Bone if you want to, but really this is the final step of it. Now, one thing I like to do after this step, and this is completely optional, you could leave it there if you wanted to, I get Seraphim Sepia again and I get a really fine brush. And all I do here is I just reapply some of the Sepia into any places where I feel that the dry brushing is maybe kind of just taking that depth away. So as you can see, like just here, where that armor panel is on the leg, I just run a little bit down there just to define it. Once again, completely optional, depending on how much time you want to put on uh, these guys. Obviously you can bang these out quite quickly if you production line them. However, sometimes it is worth just taking the extra effort. Now there is one more step, but I tend to do this at the end. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to show you what I do and then I'll cut to the other almost like color swatches for the rest of the miniature. So once everything is completed and you can see my miniature is completed here, the last step that I like to do is just get some Wraith Bone. I get a fine brush and I just add some very sharp highlights to some of the sharper edges and that's it. I'm now going to cut to the uh, 360 kind of spinny thing and I'm going to show you how I do the rest of the colors. And that's really it. Easy bone armor. Once again, it's not the quickest method, but it does give a really good effect. So whether you're painting Deathwing or just any bone colored in general, this is a really, really great way of doing it. I hope that helps. It's been really enjoyable doing these Dark Angels so far. Um, stay tuned, there's even more to come, but that's it from me in this one. I'll see you all next time. God bless and take care.